Welcome to Opalest TV. Today I'm in Paris together with Anne-Sophie Dandlou from Siam. She's the co-founder of the company that was set up four years ago. Anne-Sophie, tell us more about your strategy and the edge that you have. Siam is a French asset manager, as you said. Uh, we're specialized in event-driven with a focus on uh, hard catalyst corporate events, even mergers and acquisitions. We also have a strong and important component of activism on uh, European continental companies. We're one of the few. Our goal in that field is to obtain the fair value for our investments through the materialization of a corporate event. We launched the fund four years ago with uh, Catherine Berjal. In fact, uh, we knew each other for a long time. We met 10 years ago. And very soon we realized that we had the same approach of our business of even driven and merger arbitrage. We both knew that a risk reward basis was a real asset to deliver strong returns. So when we started the fund four years ago, we decided to launch as a pure merger up fund, investing on officially announced transactions, both in Europe and in North America. From September 2010 to the spring of 2011, everything was perfect. Lots of M&A around, but then came the Euro crisis and M&A really slowed down. The quality of the transaction deteriorated, not so many counter offers and lots of failed transactions. In 2013, we decided to widen the mandate to better address market opportunities. We knew that by doing a bit of pre-merger, a bit of post-merger and also with a layer of activism, we could better address performance. And this is what we did in September 2013. We changed the name of the fund to merger opportunities from merger arbitrage to better reflect the underlying investments. And since then, and for the last year, performance has been double digits. We're up 13% so far this year at the end of September 2014, and we've been up 15% in the last year. So Anne-Sophie, this is interesting. Please give us some example of the activism that you have been involved with. For example, Club Med. Last year there was an offer for Club Med by two private equity funds. Ardian Private Equity, the ex-AXA Private Equity, and also Fosun, the Chinese fund. What happened is that they made an offer at 17 euro for Club Med. And as we always do when an offer is announced, we looked at it into, in, in details. And very quickly, we thought that the offer was not adequate. And we decided to write to the regulator, AMF in France. And we highlighted three points. The first aspect was the independent uh, experts. In fact, we thought the expert was not independent and was not, uh, therefore, really the best to do the uh, fairness opinion. Second, in the fairness opinion, there was only one method used to evaluate Club Med, the DCF method, the discounted cash flow method. And they didn't value at all either the brand or the real estate. So we challenged that as well. And the third point that we challenged was the uh, management package. We thought it was very opaque, no details given. And man the management of Club Med was taking part to the offer. So we saw a huge conflict of interest. So the regulator looked at all of that, but still decided to approve the offer. We then decided to go to the appeals court. And the judge looked at it, AMF decided then to suspend the offer. The offer, in fact, was suspended for nine months. Our goal, as being an activist, was to give enough time to potential other suitors to come back into the play. 
because we had heard that other companies had been interested in Clemet. And this is what happened with Andrea Bonomich, an Italian company, coming back, buying a 10% stake in Clemet in the spring of this year, of 2014, and then making a full offer on Clemet, 22% above the first offer. And now the first buyers have come back with an even higher offer. So now it's 30% above the first offer, being an activist on an officially announced transaction actually bears fruit. Activist investing has been on the rise in the United States for a while now. Tell us about the status and the evolution of activist investing here in Europe and where is it taking investors like you and others? Activism is just starting in Europe. It is true that there has been a few initiatives in the past, but nothing compared to what is going on in the US. That is what makes it very interesting. We think that being based here on the continent and also knowing the cultures are real assets. Activism in Europe is different from activism in the US. In Europe, it's much more into its infancy. Therefore, the approach is different. It's more behind closed doors. It's more with uh, discussions, uh, via discussions with management teams. It's less gonna come on corporate governance and more, we think, on corporate events. And that makes a big difference. Doing activism in Europe the same way activism is done in the US is challenging because for now we haven't seen it's really working. It will probably work in the next few years, but for now the type of activism we are doing at SIAM we think is the really only type of activism that is really working. We are monitoring closely any type of activism going on here and therefore this is why we think it's going to be a very interesting next few years in the field. Corporate events will continue to be very active in the next few years, in particular mergers and acquisitions. In fact, since the beginning of 2014, M&A has been up 60% versus last year, on path to become the best year since 2008. And we think that trend that will clearly continue. There is very deep understanding at board level and at management level that growth is going to be seeked and obtained through external growth. Great answer, Fee. So summing up, what are the benefits that you're offering your investors? First, I would say that we run a conviction portfolio of around 15 positions. Second, we are very much decorrelated from the wider equity markets. Our correlation to the S&P 500 is 30% and our correlation to Eurostox is only 21%. Third, we have an activist approach with goal of obtaining a corporate event. In that field, there aren't uh, many of us doing that on the continent. Fourth, we have been doing a merger arbitrage and even driven for a very long time. Catherine Berjal has been doing that for the last 15 years. And last but not least, our performance is double digit this year. We're up 13% since the beginning of the year.